Hello my dears, this is Sarah from SheHoldsDearly.com and I'm going to share with you eight ways to add a farmhouse style to any type of home that you are currently living in. Now I understand that a farmhouse would be ideal for getting that farmhouse vintage look that you might be desiring. Although I think that most any house could work with this. You may lean different directions on the spectrum with the farmhouse style. So if you have a Victorian home, you're going to be a lot more formal and a lot more feminine. If you have a craftsman style, you could be a little bit more rustic. And even a modern, a more modern home or even like a suburban home, you can still bring these pieces in and really warm it up and give it that homey, old-fashioned feel. So I think these will work in all situations. One of the most important elements and first things to get done in a room are the walls. Because this is your backdrop for everything that you will be doing. So unless you really hate the white walls, I do suggest that you move towards lighter walls and white walls if you can. So my number one recommendation would be to paint the walls a light color, like a light gray or a creamy color or a white. My favorite white is called Silo's White. It's by the Magnolia line that Joanna Gaines sells. And then number two along that same vein would be to add texture to your walls. So I love, I mean you could do real beadboard, I love the beadboard wallpaper, I think it's just as good. It's way cheaper, it's way easier to install. You literally just get the back wet and then add it to your wall. It gets kind of a, a gooey, pasty feel to the back and then you just smooth that out and add it to your walls and then paint it. I will link the source for this. I have this even in a bathroom and it's working great. The only place I wouldn't use this is as a backsplash in your kitchen. I don't think it would hold up enough. It kind of has a foamy feel to it and it's kind of soft. Even after it's painted, you can like make dents in it. So that's the only thing I would be careful with. But beadboard texture looks beautiful. Of course, shiplap. And people are actually painting like black accent walls now with their shiplap. But shiplap's really easy to install. I have a tutorial on that, which I will link for you. So we added shiplap to my closet and then we turn it into my little office area and then also we have a big walk-in closet downstairs where we keep it's kind of like our pantry area and then the kids have their toys in there and we shiplapped that whole area and I'm really happy with it number three add in wood some raw wood and this can be even if you just add in cutting wood cutting boards I really love wood counters and I didn't want to actually replace all of my granite with wood counters, so I just did just the tall kind of breakfast bar area in my kitchen with a piece of butcher block that you can buy big sheets of it at Ikea. That's where I got mine. And then I have a tutorial on how we did the edge so it has more detail to it and it's not just straight across. From that same board, I used a piece to make a bar desk in my son's room. He's, he's in his teens. So it has a nice like industrial feel to it not over the top but it still goes with the rest of the feel in this house and I have a tutorial on that. Number four, since we're kind of talking about kitchens, would be white dishes. And don't worry about spending a ton of money on this. I get my white dishes at the thrift store and at garage sales. And so I, I'll just look for stacks. I mean we've got our, our bowls, our salad plates, our dinner plates, our mugs, and I just pay maybe a dollar each max. It doesn't bother me if they don't match. I think they all coordinate well, they layer well. If something gets broken, I'm not bothered by that. So even if you found just a single plate, I would say grab it. I think that you can even hang it on the wall or use it as put a pot on it, you know, as a centerpiece. But I especially love serving pieces that are white, so big platters and cake stands, little pieces like this. I have a whole collection of white soup terrines to put on a bookshelf that I have. Trust me, once you start grabbing up thrifted white dishes, you're gonna be addicted. All right, number five, if you can bring in a fireplace into your mix, if you don't have one, you can create them pretty easily and you're gonna look for mantles on Craigslist or, or you could buy new, but I got mine on Craigslist and then it just sat for a long time and it was fine, but we ended up 
changing the style of it, painting it, and adding just a really inexpensive electric fireplace. And so it just has just enough ambience and it actually heats the room. If you can add in a fireplace anywhere in your house, I think that really does make it cozy and give it that farmhouse vibe that you're looking for. Number six, open shelves. And I actually don't have a ton of these. I would take more of them if, if the opportunity arose, but and it doesn't have to be like the just the simple ones that aren't all connected. I think anything that is open has that farmhouse feel to it. So some people just take the, the all they can do is just take the doors off of their cabinets and put you know cute jars and or I don't know can you could do like canned goods in there. Anything that you can see that looks kind of vintage. I think counts as open shelving. So don't stress out if you're like, I can't, I'm renting, I can't rip out these cabinets. Maybe you could take the doors off. I just have some plain shelving in both of my bathroom. And we have vintage, little vintage containers for things that you would need in the bathroom. And I have those out as part of the decorations. I have a bookshelf that I just referenced that I like to fill with my soup terrines. Anything that's open, I think looks really good. This, of course, would be like, a dream this picture from Rachel Halverson these are a great example of how to use kitchen shelving that's open all right number seven work different fabrics into your decorating so linens are wonderful I kind of can't get enough of white linen I just think it's so earthy and feminine and looks good on everything I have linen drapes I have linen bedding I have linen slip covers. I have a tutorial on how to do a slip cover without a pattern, so I'll link that for you. I actually, that is my number one choice, is would be like a creamy linen, and I would do anything in my house with that. So besides white dishes, I'm always looking for pieces of fabric or linens in the thrift store that have a crocheted edge. So that would go for dust ruffles. Dust ruffles, dust ruffles are amazing. You can make curtains with them. You can use them as tablecloths. I've made blankets out of them. Any piece of fabric or particular piece of linen that has crocheted edge, grab that. I think it's perfect for that little feminine vintage touch and you can make pillows out of them, you can do all kinds of things. And my last fabric choice would be ticking, you know, those really tiny stripes. I think those are really classic and subtle and they mix well with kind of whatever else you could have going on with your decorating. This is a little apron I made out of actually a men's dress shirt that has ticking on it and then I've used it for cushions out on my porch. Whenever I'm not really sure like what's missing in a fabric situation, I like to bring in ticking and they make it, you can get them in sheets and curtains and shower curtains and all kinds of things. So if you just can't decide what you wanna use in a fabric situation, try ticking, see if you like it. The last one is number eight and it might be my favorite. It is to use farmhouse style containers for everything you can think of. I just continue to get more and switch my regular items into glass jars. I am a sucker for glass bottles, glass jars, cute baskets. I love the rattan ones. I love the wire ones. I love wooden crates. These are wine crates I got they were a dollar. I got a bunch of them at a garage sale. I, sh I wish I would have bought more. I use these for all kinds of things. Anytime you see wooden, a wooden crate with pretty detailing like this, grab that. I show you how to make a $3 wooden crate in a recent tutorial that I did here. And it's made with paint stirrers. So even if you don't have a ton of money, this stuff is really doable. If you know what you're looking for, keep your eyes open and be ready when you find things for one or two dollars. That is definitely not an all-inclusive list, but that should get you started and it kind of will take care of like the big picture with the walls and then down to the little stuff where you've got decorations. I didn't even touch on furniture. Um, I think that sometimes that can get too expensive and you need to work with maybe what you already have. So hopefully you can bring in like linen slip covers on that furniture or maybe strip the paint off and make it raw wood. So these ideas can also work well in the furniture department. So last chance on the webinar, I just wanna put this out there. If you're interested in DIY decorating, I'm doing a webinar on Tuesday, March 24th at 12.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I'm gonna be going over the three most important skills to be a DIY decorator and then how to actually use them 
to make your home beautiful. I hope you can join me. I know that this video is going live really soon right before the webinar, but I just want to put it out there one more time in case you can make it. And then my behind the scenes group, I have a decorating group where we meet once a week for an hour and then we have a whole Facebook group and a whole bunch of other things going on with that. But there's classes once a week. We go over decluttering the whole house. We go over what I learned when I was in design school and DIY decorating skills and products and techniques. We have a really sweet Bible study. And then the last week of the month, I do live consultations with the members in that group. And I do not take clients any other place. I only meet with my students in the behind the scenes group. So if that's something that interests you, get on the wait list. I'll give you a link in the description below and I hope to see you there. Thanks so much for stopping by. If you're new here, please consider hitting that subscribe button. I do post regularly and I share my DIY design advice and our vintage farm life. All right, take care. I will talk to you soon.